Wake up. What's been, what's been your message to these rookies and even the tryout players as they go along and, and get acclimated to the whole the NFL experience? Yeah, you know, what we talked about <clears throat> is just the introduction of core values. Yesterday, we introduced they introduced each other, uh, themselves to each other. Our coaches introduced themselves, where things lie in the building. So kind of some, uh, some things that just are necessary to go over. Um, but the biggest thing of yesterday's message was about our core values and how we, we uh, you know, live them and, uh, you know, what they are, why they're important, and, and how we accomplish them. And um, so we went over connect, compete, accountability, football IQ, and fundamentals yesterday. And then today was setting the, t the tone of, of how we practice, um, you know, the, the details of how we practice, where to stand, how, how to go from period to period, what you do with the quarterback, how do you, how you treat the quarterback when you're out there as a defensive player, what the, what the requirement is of finishing. We want to, we for everything that we do, we want to paint a picture of exactly what we want. Um, I talk about this a lot, you know, um, you know, how we get better every day. We're, we're highly detailed in meetings. We are full speed to the snap and walk through. We're high intensity at practice. And when, you, when you're high uh, detail in meeting, you have, to, you have to set the standard in everything that you do. And so, you know, that's, that's not only the plays that they run and the fundamentals that they run the plays with, but also how you practice. And so that was a big meeting this morning. So messages, you know, just some of the things that we start off with. Uh, stood out about Nolan Smith. <laughs> well, only been on the field with him for uh, you know an hour here and walk through. Um, you know, I'm I'm excited that he's here. Uh, I think that some of the things, you know, we probably, you know, Nolan's taking notes just like everybody else and 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 getting the 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 lay of the land just like everybody else. And so, um, you know, more of the things that I, that I would say from that stuck out with Nolan are things that we you know found out about him when he. When he came here um, from his, for his 30 visit, um, and just who he is as a person, and so you know, I'm excited that he's here, and excited that, to work with a lot of these guys that are here right now. This is your, this is your third one of these. Uh, have you sort of learned anything from the first two? When you're planning, do you tweak anything? There, we're constantly. So again, we're we're constantly trying to perfect the process. The process is always something that is constantly changing. Our job, again, as coaches, and, and what we say is high, high detail in meetings. And if you're going to have high detail meetings, you got to know exactly what you've done in meetings prior, right? What did you do last year at rookie camp? How did we get rookie camp better? And so, yeah, there, that's that's a standard operating procedure every time. You know, here's the, the layout. Coaches, here's what's required of you in rookie minicamp. Here's what we need from you. Um, here's what we said we needed, to, and then after it, we say, what could we have done better? And so that's an ongoing process. So throughout everything that we do, not just rookie minicamp, you're constantly tweaking the process. Is it full out change? Are you doing pretty much uh, the skeleton of what you're doing? Yeah, but there are tweaks here and there, and and uh, and that's through every process that that we have. Whether that's a bye week, whether that's a Monday night game, whether that's a Thursday night game, whether it's a, you know, whatever it is. We're just constantly trying to uh, improve the process, so a lot of it's similar. Um, but we, but you know, there's some there's some differences, and we feel like those differences are are we're we're doing the process better. Your, your staff is I got to teach them the exact same thing that is re required of every coach, and it, it's just kind of starting again. But that doesn't mean that. Um, you know, I didn't do that the first two years, right? Uh, to say that Shane would have remembered exactly what we did in the rookie minicamp and my requirements of Shane from one year to the next year, you know, I, I, it's my job to remind him. And so it's the same thing here. While I'm reminding Brian Johnson of what the rookie minicamp things are and the different things that we do, I'm also remind, I'm also teaching this this new to uh, uh, somebody new on staff like Sean uh, Desai. So. You know, it's just, again, being very clear, high detail in meetings. Again, I hear, you know you, I say that a lot. You guys hear me say that a lot. But it is. It's just completely setting the standard of every little detail of how you want it, right? Um, and that's just not in place. You know, uh, uh, but, again, it's it's how we practice. It's how I want the coaches to, to run practices and different things like that. So it's every portion of the building. Like a rookie minicamp holder and you have to mm -hmm. remind yourself of that stuff. Mm -hmm. you have I'm kind of crazy about to-do lists. You can ask some of the coaches there. So it's a, it's a, you know, 
I got a page with everything on there and it's saying everything that I need to do and I go through it. It's organized how I want it to be. So, hey, boom, I'm going to talk to the coordinators about this. I'm going to talk to this here. Oh, here's the things that we wanted to do better from last year. So, yeah, it works like that. Um, video, it's in the video system too, like video clips I want them to see um, that I think are important for them to see there. And, and you just build that. Um, you know, I've kind of been doing that my whole career with, you know, whatever meeting I'm in charge of running or ever, you know, all our programs that we do. Um, and so you just try to, again, like I said, perfect the process. I think that what you'll see when we're going out there is that <clears throat> we're get, trying to get everybody back into shape of football playing shape. Um, these guys have been in hotels. Um, they've been in on 30 visits. They've been get you know, um, they've been getting ready for pro or pro days. They've been getting ready for the combine. So to say any of them are in really good football shape and they're ready to play a game tomorrow, I would say that's inaccurate. Uh, not, nobody, none of those guys are. So, you know, today was not about finding out what their conditioning level was. Today was about, you know, going out there and, and my, my coaching points to our coaches were, listen, their, their bodies are not ready to play yet. This is all about protecting the players and about, while still getting them ready to play. But, you know, I've been in camps before, rookie mini camps, where you try to go all out and guys get dinged and guys get hurt. I've made that mistake before. Um, and so this was more about, hey, I want the individual drills tempoed because I know they're not in good shape right now, so it would be foolish to push them um, to, to try to do something their body's not ready to do yet. And – and to just, you know, to tempo those guys and, and do a little bit less reps. So um, nobody out there is in the shape that they need to be in, but we're working in that direction. He looks good. Um, he looked good out there today. Um, and so, uh, but like I said, it, it wasn't, today wasn't about finding out um, who was ready conditioning-wise because, to be quite frank, that none of them are. Specifically, though, he did mention that um, he was not in the condition he wanted to be for his pro day. Do you sense the commitment to that uh, in the NFL? Um, you know, I, what will, will, I told them straight up, you know, things that I will, you know, we obviously went over our rules, right? Our team rules. And one of those team rules is be on time. Another one of those team rules is be the weight you're supposed to be. And those are non-negotiable for me. Um, they know that. Um, and, uh, we'll, and we'll just keep that standard as we go. Um, but yeah, I, I sense that he wants to be a, a good, you know, the best pro he can be. And, you know, not every place Again, I don't. I don't know exactly. You know, I have no idea what each program says the person's supposed to weigh, right? Or sometimes programs, even within that NFL, don't track that, or they track it, but they don't say you got to weigh this amount. We do, so that's just new to here. We'll get him to what he's supposed to supposed to play at, and I have no no doubt in my mind that he'll uh, do whatever he needs to do to be the player he needs to be. Are you a believer? Are you? Like when the veterans are here, like pairing them up with a rookie, like someone like maybe Fletch with Jalen Carter or, or Hassan with, um, with Nolan Smith, you know, do you believe in that and how important is that to their development? Yeah, you know, again, <clears throat> we have these unbelievable veteran leaders on our team. Um, we're constantly pushing these guys to connect, right? And, and sometimes, you know, we'll give them a bunch of ideas of how to connect. You know, the other day when we talked to the team about this, you know, I showed the Christmas, the guys singing the Christmas album together or guys playing video games together or whatever it is. You're just in the point of it is like, hey, guys, find ways to connect. And, and so that's always the message. And what I say to the young guys and what I say to not even young guys, just other guys that are here is that, you know, how do you become the best in the world at what you do? Well, you study the fundamentals of, of people and the tapes that we have, or these teach tapes that we have sometimes, um, it's somebody that's not in the building because it's maybe it's a uh, maybe it's a Keenan Allen clip from San Diego, right? Or but what happens when it's a Devonte Smith clip? Well, you get to go and ask Devonte Smith exactly what he was thinking on that route. That's an unbelievable thing to have. I know a ton of our teach tapes have Fletcher Cox on it. A ton of our teach tapes have Lane Johnson on it. A ton of our teach tapes have Brandon Graham on it. A ton of our teach tapes have Jason Kelsey on it. And these players that are young or new or even the ones like Landon who've been here, they can ask, they can look over in their seat and say, hey, help me out with this, right? There's no, we can show them on tape and now they have that actual access to the player that we're learning from. And so, yeah, huge believer in that, obviously. 
um, huge believer in connecting uh, and and uh, and I know that like I've said this me- uh, many times like the veteran leadership that we have on this team is unbelievable and uh, it really it really just you know great for player development of all the way throughout the building. Guys are three quick draft picks yesterday. How much of at all or does that mean coming into like a rookie camp like this to have three guys under contract already? I, I actually don't even know. I'll be quite honest with you. I, I mean, the, all the guys practiced today. I was excited about that. Uh, it's not kind of – that's – I think I'm, I'm excited that they, they signed right, right? So because I know that they're, it could get way down the road and you'd rather have them sign early than not sign. So, But I don't really – I guess I don't really pay att- too much attention to that until I have to, right? Hey, talk about the personality traits. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> talk about city's personality traits and why he was a red star player for you guys. I guess what's it been like getting to know him the last week, and you know how does that manifest itself for you? You know, t- yesterday was the first time they were in here. They, you know, and so um, it's only been a day, and it really it, there was a lot of me talking, right, and ex- and setting the standard. And I look forward to, you know, we've got I gotten to know Sydney throughout the the draft process a little bit, but not, you know, I look forward to this next day or two. You know, to be able to to dive a little deeper into that and and and, and talk to him a little bit more. Um, so um, to say I have a good answer for you right now is not – I don't because I'm, I'm not there yet with him. Um, but, excited, you know, I know he has a really interesting story. I thought that we, I, I actually had all our coaches watch the story. Bob, Bob uh, uh, texted all the, the, the uh, story on – was it ESPN? An NFL network of, of his story and what an unbelievable story, what what things he's had to overcome and uh, to get where he is here. And it's pretty, you know, I look forward to talking to him about that. Yeah, if you're right about Sean, uh, that you didn't know until you hired him over the past couple months. Uh, just, again, just how detailed and how organized he is, um, you know, and, and how – not only is it is he detailed, but how he gets the the rest of the his staff detailed, and I look forward to seeing how that also you know translates to the players because I'm seeing the coach everyone's speaking the same language. It's just just really excited. He's just very detailed, organized, and obviously a good leader to be able to get everybody else detailed and organized. A couple more. Your response about uh, Jalen Carter's conditioning doesn't exactly ring as reassuring, given that he was. You know, coming off of a pro day where he wasn't able to finish. We didn't do like gas or anything like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I to tell you that I know exactly how somebody's conditioning is. Uh, it, after that, I know they're none of them are in great, good enough shape to go out there and have a full practice. That's why practice was cut down today. That's why we took time in between. That's what you know in between a rep. If we would have had a forty, uh, now he didn't do seven on seven today, but we did. Um, but I made those guys take a minute in between seven on seven reps. If we would have had a forty second clock out there, we would have had a penalty every single time, um, because I know none of them are ready to to practice the way we the you know the exact intensity that we're used to practicing in. So basically, I'm generalizing our entire team of saying they're not in good enough shape yet. Not a, if this was not a this was not a um, fault on him. This is everybody out there, and quite frankly, this is everybody out there practicing this weekend in rookie minicamp. None of these guys are ready to go yet, uh, as far as ready to go in in uh, in practice. But go ahead, continue. Specifically with Jalen, what's your level of concern about his conditioning at this point in time? No. Nah. Window short. It's very short window. How, how does a tryout player open the eyes of Nick Sirianni? Good question. Yeah, that's a good question. So, for, first of all, it's going to each drill and and watching him in the drill. Listen, this is what we do, right? We we every player that I watched, you know, all the, you know, every player that I watched this this off season, right? I watched their pro day, right? Or and I watched their tape. And so now I'm going to be able to do it in person, right, and watch him in person. So you go to drill to drill, you watch it, and you, and you make a little note, oh, that guy, I liked, the way, I liked what I just saw right there. And I'm not, I'm not going to give any of you guys that name of who I think it was or not. But you go and you, and you, and you dot that, and then you, and then you come back, and now I can go watch it again with the coaches. I have media right now, but I'm gonna, I should be up there with the coaches doing that. Um, I'm only teasing. Um, but now I, I'll go up there with the coaches. We'll rewatch it because obviously I couldn't watch every drill. All right, we'll we rewatch one on ones. We'll rewatch seven on seven. But it's and and what we tried to do with some of the tryout guys is we had a little extra session just for the guys that we knew that it could be only two days that we get to see them. 
So we had a little extra session at the end to make sure that we don't miss on a, a, a Adam Thielen, right? I think he was a, a try. I think I, I think he was a tryout guy. At least at, at least in my little notebook, I have it, and I said, "Don't miss Adam Thielen," right? And I know there's there's only one of him. So, but uh, you know, but you, you say that to him, and so you try to do everything you can do so you you don't miss that, and so that's just that extra period. Um, that we'll we'll evaluate, but it is just just walking from it's just watching the body movements and how they're how they're going about. Because right now, again, this is general too. It's not about what they know. If if so, I guess any question anybody asks me about conditioning on a player or any player any question they ask me about mental of a player, that's not where we are right now. We're truly studying the body movements of the player and seeing what we you know knowing the things we know about them and seeing how we can use them and stuff like that. So. Um, It'll, it'll be fun to watch this tape tonight. It'll be fun to watch the Sixers game tonight, and uh, but be, it'll really be fun to watch this tape to, today after after and uh, evaluate weight these guys even more. Last one, guys. How's the transition going for Brian Johnson uh, as he transitions to the OC role? And, and you've gone through that position, coach, the OC. What are some of the biggest challenges? Yeah, the, you're now you're not just with one position, and they're in charge of the entire group. Um, but I think. You know, what I know is that it's not just when, when you're presenting to the team, it's not just the offense coordinator presenting to the team. Brian had plenty of chances to do that and kind of interview on the fly with us last year. So, um, but it is, it's, it's truly being intentional about the relationships with every player. And, and again, when guys are in those leadership roles, they show you something that they could, that they, they already showed you that they could do that. So it wasn't like Brian was just, you know, talking to the, quarterbacks last year I would always see Brian you know talking to every guy but that's what it is is really you know being intentional about your relationship with every guy I think that's the biggest thing um, because you're especially when you're with a quarterback group you're really close with the, the, those guys because there's not many of them and now it's just being able to to connect with every everybody but like I said that's what we that's what I've I saw him do that all last year so I know that won't be a big transition for him <laughs> um, it's been exciting. I, listen, I'm just a fan. I don't know. I, I, I'm really rooting for him. I really like the. I really like the team. Um, I like the guys on the team. Like my, I like the the way they play. I like the way they're coached. Everything. Um, so I, I, I have no, like, I'm just sitting there as a fan watching it. And it's it's cool to watch it with your your kids that that they're into it now and and watching my son wear a Harden jersey to school or chant MVP for Embiid. And, and so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to just watching them and, and the run that, they, that, they're, that they're making. And I wish them the best of luck. And, uh, you know, it would be really cool if they, uh, they, keep, they keep rolling.